This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to you by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price, because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash PCPer and enter code PCPer. Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 399. See, and we don't have Josh here. So oh. uh, I'm Ryan Shrout. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. That's I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. Uh, I'm Alan Momentano. And I'm Sebastian Peek. Uh, and there is no Josh. Josh is uh, on location in Austin, Texas. There is no Josh, only Zool. <laughs> right. yes. Uh, yes. He's learning about some things from ARM. So he'll be back to report to us next week. I don't know when the NDAs are from all that stuff. But his uh, his third arm? Reportist. I don't look. Okay. I hope he's not reporting on that. I don't I don't really want to read that story. Uh, uh, what, what happened to my computer? You broke it. Uh, oh, cool. I'm running a, a scan in the background. That Which computer? Oh, perfect. The one you need or not? The one I need. Oh, no. cool. And I, apparently I just closed Chrome. So we'll just move on from here. We should uh, have performing surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, what the hell happened? He broke it. Ryan broke the computer. I broke the whole thing. That didn't take we very long. We just started the show. Yep. Hopefully I've got it so it brings up all the tabs. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. This is, uh, we talk about geometric shapes. Uh, we talk about geo prisms, uh, the vehicles. We talk about long cubes. Uh-huh. We also sometimes talk about computer hardware, uh-huh. uh, which is really what we'll focus on. Well, what's computer besides just a rectangular prism? Well, I That's mean, true. all computers are doing, especially when we get to talk about 3D, mm. we're all talking about 3D shapes. Talk right? about triangles. I've, lear- I've, I've learned about graphics cards for 20 years, and I've never heard any of those shapes called prisms. Uh, right. Okay. The thing on well, your shirt yesterday was a prism. If they that were was static. a prism. The thing on my shirt yesterday. Your Pink Floyd shirt Pink Floyd yesterday. Shirt. <laughs> Was a prism. Yes. So are you a stoner now, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> so I wore. So if, if our listeners of the podcast, if you go back and you check out uh, the video that we did on the 1080 preview, yeah, right? the GTX 1080. Uh, yeah. I just happened to wear my Pink Floyd shirt that day, and Ryan had placed the triangle from the Power of Ten thing on the oh, desk. Oh yeah. And it's like it's literally the exact same size. It's the exact as, same size as the it's, triangle on my shirt. So yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it was it, pretty cool. We should mm-hmm. not have done that. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, watch us record the show live, we do so on uh, what Wednesday. is it? Wednesdays, Wednesday. 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at pcper.com slash live. If you need a reminder, I'm just going to sit here and try to open up Chrome 100,000 times. Um, I guess I'll just restart this machine and we'll just go. Yeah, you might go. just want to do that. Um, so if you go to pcper.com slash subscribe, you get a little web page. Let me just grab it for you. Visualize this. <laughs> it is pcper.com. Alan will just edit this in. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Just visualize pcper.com, but where the articles normally go, uh-huh. there's a place to put your name and your email address and a submit button. Uh-huh. And when you do that, you get signed up for our mailing list. We send you notifications about uh, when we're doing live streams, uh, which, which, is what, which is what we're doing now. Uh, so like right now. Make sure you sign up for that. Uh, Also, uh, imagine, if you will, a page on Patreon.com. Patreon.com slash PC per. It is a place. It's a really cool cool, uh, platform, I guess I would call it in general, where uh, users can directly support the creators of uh, content that they enjoy, whether it be music or books or writing or websites or videos like we we do here. Let's see. Restore pages. What could go wrong? And uh, did you you crash, don't you? Did you start the application? Oh, I did not. Uh, yeah, got to start the, the desktop presenter. I've got to present, and now you should see hey. it. Hey. Hey. You don't have to imagine. I don't what know the what Patreon button that is. Hey. Looks like this is what it is. Um, and if you want to 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 contribute to us, if you like the show, if you like the podcast, if you like the reviews we do, the website, all that type of stuff, you can go here, uh, sign up for a recurring monthly contribution. It could be a dollar, it could be a thousand dollars, anywhere in between. It's really totally up to you. Uh, we've got a cool little video on here that talks about why we are, are asking for support. You can see like how the, the old PC perspective looked. And um, anybody who makes a contribution or updates their contribution, increases Dur- it during, during the, the live stream yep. of the podcast, I will read your name off. Uh, Ryan will read whatever <laughs> you put in whatever for you your name. Whatever you put in your name, I will read on the live stream. You will read. Um, Unless if, it's prism themed. If it, well, if it has... If it has prism the, themed? Yes, prism theme. If it has direct cursing, I probably won't read it. True. But if it has like 
you know, double entendre, I'll, mm-hmm. I will still read it. Especially yeah. if it alludes to me, apparently. Especially if it alludes to Ken. Yep. But look, I can only read what people submit, <laughs> yep. to be fair, right? Uh, so, okay, people have waited long enough. Let's actually get to uh, the content that people are, are here for, the, the content itself. Let's talk about the GTX 1080 uh, and GTX 1070. Last Friday, NVIDIA had an event. They had a live stream uh, uh, where they officially announced – the often rumored, long leaked GTX 1080 graphics card. Yep. Um, we actually have one sitting right here in front of right us. Right there. We're allowed to show it and all that type of stuff. So there it is. Uh, it's based on Pascal. It's all chiseled. It is. Uh, this one, is this 14 or 16? I'm what? getting them mixed up. Nanometer. I, I, this oh, is 16. 16. Yeah. 16. Is this one 16? Yeah. And the yeah. AMD is going to be 14? I think. That's what they're saying. I can't remember which one is made at which now. It is even though they're, a, even though they're a, made at the same place. Sixteen is TSMC, who is making the NVIDIA GPU. Okay. Oh, okay. That's so. Fine. It's it's FinFET. It's it's the next process node technology down. Yep. Uh, actually, I'd say it's actually two generations of process node technology. Yeah, because they kind of skipped the last. We've been at twenty eight forever. It mm-hmm. seems like uh, twenty was kind of a cluster uh, in terms of availability and performance. We went straight to sixteen FinFET, and the result is pretty pretty impressive. Uh, both in terms of what they're uh, allowed to offer or what they can offer. Uh, I'm missing a page here. Let me go back and, and find the right article page. Um, so TDP on this guy is like, what, 180? So the TDP is 180 watts, uh-huh. which is slightly is that more than the 980. The 980 was 165. Right. The 980 Ti is 250. Mm-hmm. So Kind of falls in the middle, but closer to... Those are both than, based on Maxwell. Closer to the 980. Yeah, it's close to the 980. It's yep. got a single 8-pin power connector. You can see, I mean, if you want to see the visuals of the design, we've got some pictures here on the website, right? It looks exactly like all the leaked pictures we've seen in terms of the very angular design, a very similar uh, uh, design itself in terms of it's a blower-style cooler. Um, it's got the same display port or display output configurations, a DVI, and HDMI, and three display ports. Um, but we now know specifications. We know that it has 2,560 CUDA cores. We know that it has a base clock of 1,607 megahertz. Which is high. Which is very high. It has a boost clock of 17.33, I'm sorry, 1,733 megahertz, 1.733 gigahertz. It has 8 gigs of memory that is GDDR5X. It's a 256-bit interface, but because of its GDDR5X performance, it's running at 320 gigabytes per second. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it has a 180-watt listed uh, power update with one 8-pin power connection. Uh, the GTX 170, I'm sorry, 1070. GTX 1070 by comparison, which will be the next step down, mm-hmm. is um, they didn't mention, I guess they didn't really say how many CUDA cores it had, did they? Oh, no, I don't think they broke that down. They just list 6.5 teraflops, uh, while the 1080 has is listed at 9 teraflops. Uh, so a significant cut. It's a significant cut. Yeah. It yeah. is. 8 gigs of GDDR5, not GDDR5X. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I like NVIDIA's uh, abbreviation for this now. They're just calling it G5 or G5X. So I'm going to start doing that going forward. Is okay. it a Logitech mouse? Yeah. Uh, hey, you know, whatever works. <laughs> um, now, so about pricing, the GTX 1080 will have a base MSRP of $599. It will have a, quote, founder's edition for $699. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the GeForce GTX 1070 We'll have a base MSRP of 379 with its founder's edition being 449 right? And again, if you look at this picture with Jensen and the, and the slides behind him, you actually, the 1070 is the same kind of cooler aesthetics, at least. Whether or not it's made of the same materials or whatever, I, I don't really know so yet. So it sounds like the pricing is roughly proportional to the Gigaflops performance uh, Just see, 900 to 600 versus 65. I mean, I don't know. It seems it's reasonable yeah, to me in terms yeah. of its cut. I will say, before we get into all the debate about... Um, Founders Edition and all that stuff. We'll save that towards the end. The five ninety nine price point and the three seventy nine price points are pretty aggressive, especially that GTX ten seventy at three seventy nine. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Once cards are shipping for that price, yeah. So, yeah. I said we get to that to the end. It's yeah. like fifty dollars higher than the last generation, though. Uh, I think the, the nine eighty was five fifty. Was five forty nine. It's fifty dollars so. higher than the nine eighty. But the, the previous generation launched that. What did the nine seventy launch? I thought at? it was like three thirty. Yeah, I don't something like three thirty. I want to say it was like three forty nine, maybe. Okay. So it's within it's within it's within reach. So they are still creeping up a bit. Uh, yeah. Keep in mind that both of these cards will be faster than a nine eighty Ti or a Titan X. Yeah. Even the ten seventy. Even the ten seventy that sells for three seventy nine will be faster will be than a nine eighty Ti. Than a 980 Ti. 
um, to, an, some, to some degree, right? <laughs> it's just um, crazy. So this confirms, you know, that none of these GPUs are going to use HBM. Um, that's kind of for the big compute-based GP100 GPU. Yep. Um, they you might to, call the 1080 Ti. Just a, maybe just, if just if, they thought, could, uh, if they if uh, they continue down the the pattern that they had with the with the 900 series, they would do that. Be the 1080 X. Um, <laughs> they also uh, showed new SLI connectors. They've got those here. Um, they're called the SLI HB bridge. They put, have double the bandwidth compared to Maxwell. So we'll have more information on that eventually as well. Um, I did see. I will mention here just because I saw a news post right before I went live on Overclock 3D dot net. Oh, is that where that went up? I think so. Uh, where there was an EVGA support rep in a forum quoted it saying that the GTX 1080 will only support two way SLI. Yes. So whether or not that affects you, like if that's true. So that means those bridges only, that's just like the. That's just spacing. That's the two, three, or four slot spacing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for two cards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because I had heard rumors on some website somewhere that. You might only be able to use two at a time. Well, if you look, so we compared, we just sat like a 980 Ti right next to the 1080, and the connectors themselves are the same, mm -hmm. but the idea is that those bridges probably are just connecting both. Right. Like, we don't have those bridges in yet, so we couldn't no. even say for sure. But I would imagine if they said they're doubling the bandwidth, right, and if you combine that with the fact that you can only do two-card SLI, that makes sense that the bridge would just do what it used to do to be able to enable four-way SLI or three-way SLI where, you know, one card was using both of those halves of the connector to right. go to different other cards. Sure. Now you just yeah. have, you, now you can only just go to the other GPU and you're using both yep. to do that, right? I'd assume the theory here is it's like support for higher resolutions, higher bandwidth. Yeah. Copies over that is, is probably what that's for. It'll be interesting what the reaction is. If it's true that it only supports two-way SLI, what the reaction yeah. is. It is yeah. a rumor at this point. But this but. isn't the product that people would be buying <clears throat> three of necessarily. Uh, yeah. yeah, you might assume that'd be like the 1080 well, Ti. Yeah, like you would go to the highest end GPU if before you're gonna you buy started three. adding three of them. Yeah, in theory. You're not wrong. People I did think do it's three important way for us to understand but. this. Wait, Alan and I had this discussion. Yeah. Do you think what percentage of GeForce users that exist use SLI? I would 20. guess 20%. <laughs> I no, would no. guess no. I would guess two percent. If you think of I oh no, I, I wasn't thinking of GeForce users. I was thinking of like nine eighty owners. I was thinking of GeForce oh, okay. users. If you think okay. of like yeah, yeah, yeah. nine sixty and above, yeah. nine hundred series, would you say one out of fifty cards goes into a multi GPU configuration? That's one out of fifty owners fair, goes into one. Right. I, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. And then think of what the percentage must be if you go to three or four way solutions. It's even and, lower. And the QA of that becomes the issue, right? Yeah. So if if that's if that's in fact what they decided to do, that will be why. And and we'll have official wording from them. It's I guess. kind of disappointing this like you won't see the four yeah. GPUs with the with, with the crazy water yeah. blocks like stuff. Yeah. You, won't, you won't see that anymore. Yeah, I agree. We'll we'll see. Um so all these are gonna go on sale on May twenty seventh, the ten eighties. Uh, the ten seventies will be on sale on June tenth. So there's a there's a little bit of a gap there. Now let's try to get into um, the ones that are on sale will be Founders Edition. What what that even means, yes. right? So um, they list five ninety nine MSRP for the GTX ten eighty and six ninety nine for the Founders Edition. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can tell, and this is actually you know confirmed info from Nvidia at this point, that is a Founders Edition. That card, the Founders Edition, is essentially what we previously knew as the reference edition. Yep, formerly known as reference card. What, what, what NVIDIA put out with the 980, 980i, it looks very similar to this in terms of its design and the cooler and the blower mm -hmm. design and everything, was um, reference design. Yep. Now it's called Founders Edition. Gives a little bit fancier name. It's a little bit ritzing it up. And they're selling it. Uh, the, NVIDIA will be selling it directly, but so will partners. Yes. EVGAs, ASUS, MSIs, whoever, they will sell cards that look just like that, that maybe have a different sticker or maybe not um, but, as but, Founders Editions. But would they be selling them at the Founders Edition price from Cor NVIDIA? Yes, they would. They will all be... Really? Yes. Anything that has that cooler will have that price. An extra 100 bucks. Yeah, will be 699 An extra 100 bucks for a blower-style cooler? It's odd, right? I'm not going to... I, you know, I can't, I can't really defend it at this point because so... Because like, like an ACX3 cooler or whatever is probably going to work better than that. And, yeah, and you're telling me that would potentially be on a card that's a hundred dollars cheaper. So here's here's Nvidia's justification for it, right? Is 
they claim to be using higher end uh, components, right? Higher quality components, high, high quality materials in the cooler, okay. like board components. So better chokes and stuff right. like that. They're and... not binning GPUs. They're not setting it higher clocks. Like these cards are going to run at reference clock speeds. Okay. Or I don't even know if they call them reference clock speeds. Founders clock speeds. Founders I don't, clock I don't know if that's they've never actually mm, used that term. I think that's term, still but, reference for that. <laughs> uh, but but the Base the idea is speed. so here's here's the positive way of thinking about it. A, 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 Nvidia wants to sell this card, but they don't want to compete against their partners. So okay. they're going to price it higher than it needs to be, right? In order to give EVGA and ASUS and MSI room at the 599 to 699 range to put out their own products. Okay. Right. Now, the negative to all of this is that when these first go on sale, that's all you're going to be able to find. Yep. I would guess for probably 2 weeks at best, that's all you'll be able to find. Maybe you'll find pre-orders for other ones like EVGA's ACX 2.0 or 3.0 sure. coolers whatever. Some people um, will probably do pre-orders on the same day, I would imagine. They may. They may. But in terms of like instant immediate availability, they're all going to be founders editions, which means they're all going to be 699. And I've already had people like in our video preview question like, "Well, how when you review this card, when you like give your price per performance summary of this card, what do, do you, you base use? it on the six ninety nine price, or do you base it on the five ninety nine price? And that's actually a legitimate concern, right? Because on one hand, I want to use the five ninety nine price because I I believe after talking with AIBs that you will see cards at five ninety nine that will also perform the same. Yeah, they will be at least as fast right. as that card. Hmm. Um, but I would, I, say, but I, I don't know that yet. You might, you might have to just use both initially. Yeah. If you calculate a price performance, give but, both numbers. But if any, but I mean, if this card is six ninety nine, then that card is six ninety nine, and if I'm, that card's going to be six ninety nine forever, from every partner with that cooler, then yeah. you have to you have to judge it at six ninety nine. I'm just still baffled that like that card with that cooler, but from a partner, is still the same price. Like that just. Well, they weren't going to let why would they sell do it cheaper. It. Yeah, why would they let them sell it cheaper? If, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Well, because then they're still competing with the partners. But and it's, the ex- not at a it's higher literally price. the exact same product. I get at it. that point, right? I get it. Yeah. So, so it, and like the board component thing is confusing because the first batch of custom coolers usually have the Nvidia board anyways because they don't have enough time. To I spend don't think that's board. the case. These are all uh, everything that's not a Founders Edition will be a virtual design, which is PCB refresh from them. Mm-hmm. Oh, their own placement. Right. Now okay. they they could just copy it. I would imagine <laughs> yeah. they right. Yeah, like I'm sure Nvidia provides this some kind of the reference, reference design, design, right? <laughs> and says here's here's how you do this. They provide a founder's design with which you can base the foundation. Maybe that's what that's about. They could just you base the foundation of your new GPU on. But they again, just, it, it's they could just copy it. It's all like, kind of screwed up. I mean, thing. the pessimistic part of me says this is just a money grab they're trying to get an extra hundred bucks out of everybody who wants to get in early to the 1080 <laughs> i still feel like maybe be new process out. node they might not have the best availability it's, so they're trying to get a hundred dollars out in the beginning yeah. when they can that it's is true it will, it will reduce case. demand slightly but i i still have a feeling that i still think they'll sell seeing, i still yeah, yeah i still think they're gonna sell a lot even the founders edition oh yeah oh yeah so i so i don't for know people who are pre-ordering that it, it's not going to make any difference because it's not based on cash. It's based on I want it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true. And and it as a as a reviewer and as a gamer and as a consumer, that sucks to think that they're just making a hundred dollars more just because. Yeah. You know, just because I'm eager to get it. But I mean, it's business. It's yeah. It's as long as a year down the road, sales like they it's, don't. As long as a year down the road, they don't offer this Founders Edition Shroud as a DLC for one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, right. It's like the day one edition of your Xbox, right? Yeah, it literally. But did is. I pay more for it? No, you I didn't. didn't. <laughs> right? Like, and like the the Kickstarter. Well, you did because well, in six months the price went down pretty I did, dramatically. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I even at the higher price though, I think price perfor- performance is still going to look good. I mean, it'll probably it look good, but it won't be as good. It won't be as good as it I mean, should $100 be. I mean, hundred dollars is a hundred dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. So it'll be the fastest GPU that exists, clearly. Right, especially at that price. But the but the if you base this on the assumption that there will be a GTX 1080 uh, Ti, right, right, then will they do the same <laughs> thing? Will it be 699 base, 799 Founders Edition, uh, or maybe like 649, 749, or what? Like you 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 just see it waterfalling down into yeah. The reference is just going to be a hundred dollars more now. 
Maybe it'll well, back- they only sell half of them. They're obviously not going to do it. They right. sell it, a it, good chunk of them. If it were to backfire on them, then. Yeah. But I don't. I just don't foresee that. There's so much pent up excitement for nope. new GPUs for both Nvidia and AMD that like. Right. I don't think there's going to be a problem selling it. I don't think AMD will have a problem selling Polaris, whatever it turns out to no, be. No, they probably won't either. But it, when, I, when there's a 1080 Ti, can we block out the T on it so we have a GTX 1080i? <laughs> <laughs> it only does every other you have to put them in sli yeah otherwise you don't get actual interleaved. yeah sebastian you were gonna say something I, I think the the issue that i see with this is just that they literally held up ginseng held up a card and said this card is 599 and the audience goes crazy yep and you're holding up a 699 dollars card you are presenting aibs with the opportunity to sell one for 599 which is just a suggested price you look at companies like evga that have probably the most like different tiers you have like the super clocked and the acx 2.0 and then the acx super clocked and the super super clocked ssc yeah. models and there's going to be different prices out there from the re- from the non reference designs and what if they are if they're a strong seller? What's the impetus going to be to actually sell these for five ninety nine? There's going to be like a six hundred and forty nine dollar model and a six seventy nine dollar model, and there's going to be a twin Frozer four cooler model. And yeah, I agree that part of it is the fact that they they showed the five ninety nine price, but the first one available. Is six ninety nine. Yeah. I just, so I does that really count as five ninety nine? A month from now, just, I'd like to know just, if there's even a single model that you can buy for five ninety nine. Well, I think there. I, I think. I think there will be, but there Maybe. won't be nearly as many. Yeah. Right. And I. I yeah. I. I'm not a huge fan of how this was done, but, you know, I don't. What do I get? Uh, Sebastian, you did post uh, like our first leak out of a uh, a custom cool design. And what a design it is. <laughs> <laughs> Make a box it, that looks kind of like it. It looks like, like it. they went back to the GTX 680, like the OEM Actually, that does look models. like a 680 cooler. Yeah, m- m- Maybe the $100 is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's inside a case and you don't have a side panel. Like sure. Who, like, who cares sure. at that point? Yeah. Exactly. But that's a really ugly card. Look at that box. What's going on with that box? That's the, um, uh, I don't know. That's the clown from um that game payday right i, I don't think so sure i think there's not? a clown masks not paint oh uh, well that's a problem <laughs> i don't know what that is it says it's what's really, your game it's Some, really creeping me out somebody got that wrong uh yeah i mean they put as much design in the box <clears throat> as they did the card. And also to be fair <laughs> look at those sweet angles they didn't leak the price of this right yeah they no. kind of angled the the end of it a little bit to make it this could very well be six ninety nine too right we'll, we'll see <laughs> you just don't know God, I hope not you just don't know that'll be horrible well well we'll that's find out you, that's what you get we'll know soon enough uh indeed I so, expect to see one just like this from m s i only that big blank space on the left side will have like the m s i sticker on it yeah it's just begging for a sticker As and you'll see one from m s i and you'll see one from uh, Zotac, and there'll be a few others. All right, so that's our GTX 1080 talk. Uh, <laughs> we will have more. Nope, we're not going to talk that's about it. it. We'll never talk about it again. Nope. I don't know if I'm. Su- I don't think I'm supposed to say when the NDA is. That's not like a. Did they announce leave. availability of the cards? They announced the availability 27th. of the 27th. Okay. The NDA yeah. is not the 27th. I'll go ahead and say that. And Let's actually, see. actually, I'll just say it because <laughs> screw it. Um, there are a bunch of people in our preview video. Where they talk, they like. There's tons of comments that list the NDA. Oh, somebody already. Some knows other it? YouTuber, some oh, YouTuber yeah. leaked it out. Apparently, I know. So it's May 17th. So it'll be okay. next Tuesday. So on next week's podcast, we'll have the full review out. Um, and uh, that's the, that's what Alan and I have been thinking, working on all day. Thinking YouTubers. I know, ruining it for everybody. Oh wait, is our video on YouTube? <clears throat> yeah, but Dang we're it. not YouTubers. Trust oh, us, okay. we're not. We're not in that clip. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. So let's get into some other stuff that that happened. I guess. Wait, no, wait. Is this our uh, oh. is this our break period? Ken? What? Oh yeah, ad break. Yeah, we need a, a quick nap. Okay, everybody, take a nap. Time to talk about today's podcast sponsor. Speaking That's of right. naps. 
Speaking of naps. Yeah. Who brought up naps? That's so that's so coincidental. Uh, this Doesn't episode it? of Peace Perspective is brought to you by Casper. All right. Our good friends at Casper. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. Uh, they are revolutionizing the mattress industry by cutting the cost of dealing with resellers and showrooms and passing the savings directly on to the consumer. The benefits of Casper include it's an obsessively engineered mattress at a very fair price. I would like to know what an obsessively, uh, obsessively? engineered thing is. Okay. Um, it's a founder's edition. Because it, <laughs> it's a founder's edition mattress at the uh, same price, but it, but they don't charge, they don't upcharge you for it. If anything, they're giving you a discount because they're cutting out uh, a bunch of the middlemen. They combine two technologies: springy latex foam and supportive memory foam to create an award-winning sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. It's a breathable design, sleeps cool to help you regulate your temperature throughout the night. I will say I have one of these mattresses, and it's not um, a lot of the uh, like original. Like Tempur-Pedic style memory foam stuff. Yeah, it doesn't do. They that. complained about just kind of like a smothering effect from it. This does not. This does not have that effect for me. Uh, I got my mattress tried. It's it is it is very comfortable. You can buy it easily online. It ships to you. It's completely risk free. Uh, you can actually um, try it out for a hundred days. You can. Uh, they offer free delivery and painless returns within a one hundred day period, so you don't have to lie down on a showroom. And did you know, statistically speaking. This is their statistics. <laughs> Lying on a bed in a showroom has no correlation to whether or not it is the right bed for you. I can you. back that up. I know you I, say that every time. I, so. went, I went to Ikea last night, and I laid on a bunch of beds. And you can't tell Jack. No, you can't tell the difference. Yeah, you can't. Especially with their awful mattresses at Ikea. Yeah, they're, they're probably horrible. Not, they're probably not good. I should just get a Casper. Casper mattresses are made in the USA. You get free shipping and returns to the U.S. and Canada. You can get uh, a Casper mattress for $500 for a twin or $950 for a king. Comparing this to industry averages, that is an outstanding price point. And you can save an additional $50, Ken, towards a mattress Ooh. purchased by going to casper.com slash PCPer and entering the promo code PCPer. That's casper.com slash PCPer, promo code PCPer. Terms and conditions do apply, but we thank Casper for their support of this week's PC Perspective podcast. See, I'm getting ready to move, so I can just take my current mattress, burn it in the streets, move, and then have Casper deliver one to me in a box. You could. Just cut it open. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a great yeah, idea just, to me. I just no don't burn that, that one when you move again. <laughs> see no problem. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, now we'll get on to uh, the news items, including Microsoft updating Windows 10 UWP platform to support unlocked frame rates and G-Sync FreeSync. Um, if you guys, Finally. If you guys remember back to March, yeah. Phil Spencer talked at, who was head of Xbox at Microsoft, uh, talked at the, uh, was it the Build? Build Con- conference? Build I think developer so. yeah. conference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and say, hey, look, we know there's some complaints about UWP games on mm-hmm. PC. We're going to try to address them. And he said uh, they plan to open up, this is a quote, plan to open up VSync, FreeSync, and G-Sync in May. Uh, it's May. It turns out that they, not only did they hit it in May, they did it in like early May. Yeah. Right? So uh, Microsoft pushed out a Windows update this week that updated the UWP platform to enable unlocked frame rates mm-hmm. and variable refresh technologies like G-Sync and FreeSync in games now but, the games have to be updated yeah. themselves it's yep. the, the the uwp platform doesn't automatically enable that stuff you have to uh, update it in, in the game they just added the ability to do Correct. it yeah uh as a direct response to your feedback we're excited to announce the release today of new updates to windows 10 that make gaming even better for game developers and gamers uh support for amd FreeSync and nvidia g-sync unlock frame rates um, and we actually, I think it's today. Can you tell me? Gears of War updated today. Gears of War updated to support mm-hmm. unlocked frame rates. And I don't, I don't, I don't know about be, the variable refresh I don't stuff. Know about I would too imagine. hard to implement. Like it shouldn't. It, it's it's probably just a couple no. of system Here's calls they make now. Yeah. yeah. Here's what's interesting to me. So like they they sent that this email out and they had like a QA in it. And there was a question about like an unlock. What is an unlock frame rate, or what does it mean? Yeah. And Microsoft's answer answer was VSync refers to the ability of an application to synchronize game rendering frames with the refresh rate of the monitor. Mm-hmm. When you use gaming, when you use a game menu to quote disable VSync, you instruct applications to render frames out of sync with the monitor to refresh. Being able to render out of sync with the monitor allows the game to render as fast as the graphics card is capable and unlocked frame rate. But this also means that tearing will occur. Tearing occurs when part of two different frames are on the screen at the same time. Yep. Um, now, at the time, they didn't really have any specification there about whether or not you would actually see screen tearing on the UWP games because it was interesting to me because I assumed that you would not see screen tearing okay. because UWP does not ever go into an exclusive full screen. You are still in a borderless full mm-hmm. screen mm-hmm. mode, right? 
So you're basically in a window that expands to every edge. Sure. But you, so you can still alt tab around it. You know, you can still yeah. move the. You know, it's actually really nice. Uh, but even with, you know, Nvidia and AMD and like the games that have done borderless uh, full screen mode up till before you did UWP Unified Windows Platform, um, you never could disable VSync. Uh, you would. You, yeah. You'd always have a VSync thing. You would because, never see screen because sharing. because that Windows desktop environment is always VSync. Correct. Is, is, which is yeah, wrong. like the the yeah. the Windows the Driver, Microsoft Windows the, manager the, the Windows, that's going on the um, background. Yeah. Never you you know doesn't want to show tearing, so it would always right. do it that way. Because otherwise, you'd be dragging a, a window across the screen, and it would tear. But I, I emailed Microsoft bad. about it, and they clarified to me that screen tearing will be able to occur in UWP games on Windows 10 after the integrated support okay. for today's patch. So somehow they say will be able. So I don't know if it's something where the developer still gets. The yeah, option yeah, to yeah. do it that way, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So what basically what they're doing is they're just letting that environment tear if a game is full screen. So they're not vsyncing anymore, right? Like, I would imagine that they would have to do something to. The games will be patched to simulate screen tearing. <laughs> yeah, it'll just on draw. your frame locked monitor. It's actually running vsync. But it's yeah, just, it's running it just, it just, just throw in some tear yeah, and some just other aberrations. some tears for you. Look, this is what you wanted, right? Yeah, you wanted tears, Jeez. right? Here you go. So now you get the V-Sync latency and Damn, the tears. PC and they put a CRT races. filter over it for some reason. It's yeah, weird. Yeah. Trinitron. What's, this, what's this Trinitron master. button? Apparently yeah, my <laughs> image didn't upload correctly. Huh. I should probably fix that picture. Oh, wait, no. Mm. Uh, so that, I mean, that's that's good news. Um, they're still talk. They still plan to enable other overlay support. They still plan to enable um, modding. Modding, yeah, to it. Uh, and the only thing, the only tip we had was at the end of their press release, they say that we should quote expect to see, <clears throat> excuse me, expect to see some exciting developments on multiple GPUs in DirectX 12 in the near future. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. Anybody comments on any of the any of this stuff? I mean, is that there's still the debate of why would you ever buy a game on UWP unless it's the only way to buy the game? Which Gears of War is, Quantum Break is, Forza is slash will be. Is that only UWP? Yeah, yeah, it will it's, be. It's, it's in it was beta an Xbox right now. One game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what they would love is for developers to come up with an Xbox version of it that runs on PC. So they only develop one. They use their yeah. platform. Yeah. And in this ma- magical world of theirs, everybody uses a Surface tablet and a Windows 10 PC <laughs> and an Xbox. And all the games, a version of them will run on every platform. Right. But yeah, not, I so. not can't see how that anymore. won't work. What? No more Windows Phone, though. Even they don't believe in Windows Phone. Um, yeah. yeah, no, not anymore. So Doom is coming out on Friday. Uh-huh. The new Doom. I, I actually for, had no idea. I saw it for uh, pre-order. I'm, I'm I'm excited to play it. Uh, it looks pretty cool, and some of the demos I've seen, it plays very fast. Yeah, like it it is. Yeah, it I, is. I, I played in one of the multiplayer closed oh, alphas. You? Yeah, yeah. It it was fun. It was. Is it like definitely Quake fast Three fast? It's a little slower. It's yeah. like. Uh, I don't know. It's like UT fast, maybe like UT two thousand four okay. fast. Okay. Not quite. I mean, that's and that's, CA, that's but so it's um it's coming out on Friday. Uh, Jeremy, what did uh what what did they talk about this week? There were a couple of interesting news bits that came out with Doom this week. Oh, the the Vulcan nerve patch. Yeah, Vulcan neck pinch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it won't be at launch, but very soon after launch, which with these guys probably means within a couple of weeks at the outside. Sure. It will work with uh, the Vulcan API, which is kind of neat. And they've shown proof of concept. Uh, Scott just uploaded a new video uh, earlier today that shows significantly more than the original one did. And it's going to work relatively nice, which is pretty cool. I, because if you watch some of this footage, comments, Ken, if you show Vulcan this, is dead and will never exist. This is this is this almost looks like it's being accelerated in speed to me. Um, but they swear that it's not. Huh. Like it's it's UT a fast. It's fast moving for sure. Um, the running is fast. Like yeah, the right running there. is fast. The jumping is fast. Although maybe that guy's just he's holding. C- he's clearly using a mouse and keyboard. Maybe he's yeah. just holding down shift. Maybe, but either way, like 
I mean, how else do you play? You always sprint every yeah, day, yeah, right? I guess. With a knife. Um, but right. with scissors. <laughs> and that's also going to make it very easy for you guys to benchmark, right? Yeah, exactly. Of course. <laughs> so uh, it's cool that since they're going to have, uh, apparently they're doing OpenGL and then Vulkan. I don't think yeah. there's, I, think, I don't think there's a DirectX version of this. I don't, I don't no. know the answer to that. Well, it runs on Xbox One, so somewhere there yeah, is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it may support all three. Um, so they actually okay, showed that. DX12, though. They showed that at the yeah, uh, NVIDIA demo <laughs> or at the NVIDIA event, apparently, it running on Vulkan for the first time. Yeah, they said it was running at 1080p max, 200 frames per second. Up to 200 frames per second. Uh, yeah. Because when I, when I, I thought when I saw it, well, let me, I could verify this. It got up to like 140, 150 in okay. the demo at Editor's Day. Mm, I really don't. I really don't think they, they talked said about, up to. I thought they, they were did, saying they 200. Ab- but They talked about they found a yeah. bug ah. at, at 200 frames per second where like <laughs> other timing started to be wrong at that <laughs> oh. point once you start rendering it's at 200 going frames per too second. Fast. Yeah. You know, like if you've ever played S- Skyrim where you turn off. Um, uh, frame cap. Yeah. If you, uh, you turn off frame cap. Yeah, and you render over 100 frames per second. Right, the physics sometimes don't work. forces just float off the ground because like the physics oh, yeah. engine is oh, tied the- <laughs> into some of this stuff. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's it, it makes benchmarking kind of fun because this horse will be doing stuff faster up. than the time period that it thought the physics was based yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's pretty interesting. I, I'm excited to play it. Like I, I have not played any of the early access stuff, alphas, betas, whatever you call them, uh, but it is out on Friday the 13th, of course. Um, mm. Yeah, dun, get dun, it. Dun. and uh, we're, I'm trying to see if I can put it in like the benchmark suite for the GTX 1080, but it may be a little bit late uh, in on arrival. We'll see how that goes. So, Doom, everybody, Doom. Uh, let's talk about more leaks. Okay, the GTX 1080 doesn't have to leak anymore. Well, actually, I'm sure there will be leaks between it's, now and and stuff on, on its on of its course. benchmarks. But uh, Cabby Lake. Benchmarks apparently have leaked out. Uh, Cabby Lake being the successor to Sky Lake. Is that is it? Oh, so it's not like Sky Lake E it's or whatever. Apparently, going to be called the Core i seven seventy seven hundred K. Okay. It's not very shocking. It's yeah. It's sure. not. It's not. It's not a surprise really. Um, Cabby Lake is apparently it's a quad core processor that runs at 3.6 gigahertz, 4.2 gigahertz turbo, 8 megs of L3 cache, has 24 compute units on its GPU portion. Um, so is this a tick or a talk or a this is whatever an in the between. third thing is? Well, this, this don't is, exist this anymore. anymore. <laughs> this, this is the this is the in between. This it's, is it's the, a waltz now. It's not. Yeah, a, it's yeah. a sidestep where we're not changing our process tech, we're not changing our architecture. We're just going to tweak a little bit of stuff here and there, okay. and boom. So maybe a little less power use, and maybe a I little faster clocks. Or uh, what? May, so okay, maybe ten percent. Performance increase. Probably I don't not even, even that much. Probably not even ten percent. No. Yeah, no, like the five. numbers look more like five percent. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then Boy. It's the exact same GPU. Seemingly, it looks like the five thirty from the twenty four EUs. So very. What is this like? A hundred megahertz faster to three hundred megahertz faster with you, turbo. You have to figure they're going to change enough for it to be a sellable thing. Like, uh, well, I mean? you know how they make it sellable. They call Stop it the Core i7 7700K, and, and then it just, comes out with hey, a new buy this. set launch. And then it just yeah, but the chipset should be backwards compatible. It will be. It will the be. Socket won't change. Think so. And I don't know what they'd really add on the chipset. Uh, more USB 3.0. No, <laughs> USB 3.1. More cowbell. Yes. And more LEDs. More apparently. lanes. Maybe there'll be more PCIe lanes. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's not. I mean, it, I mean, I don't know this. I don't know anything oh, yeah, about says, on the uh, side of it. It'll the glow. Chipset is said to include up to 24 PCI Express 3.0 lanes, up from 20. Oh yeah, there was that. Oh, so they you can do another M.2 SSD. The company will also offer a newer yeah. 200 series chipset built on an LGA 1151 with a few more I/O side improvements. So there, you might see some slight, you know, improvement in like Wait number of USB 3.0 Scott, native ports. Scott hmm. points out here that the 6700K. Had a base clock of four gigahertz, right? I have no idea. I? This one has a base clock of three point six. You know what? You are <laughs> right. It was only four to four point two with the sixty seven hundred K, wasn't it? It was yeah. very narrow. I believe they're going the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! This is where your power savings are coming from. Oh the, yeah, your we're saving you. Spend a lot of time going a bit slower. We're saving you plenty of power over the previous yeah. generation. We'll just oh, dial yeah. down this oh, this clock. Uh, 
Okay. That's pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, the 6700K is just a 4 to 4.2. Right. So what's and the this boost is 3.6 this. to what? This was 3.6 to 4.2. <laughs> well, at least you know the high number this, is still the same. This may just be a bin 6700K. No, it's a I mean, poorly it's, bin 6700K. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's the reject. It's, negatively it's bin binned part. for better power efficiency so that's, by running at lower power. for better profit. So that's what the second <laughs> talk is. They're just like, see these, these warehouse full of old crap chips we couldn't sell it's we'll not a, it's not these. tiktok anymore it's a ka-ching ka-ching yeah <laughs> tiktok, yes, TikTok ka-ching. ka-ching uh side note before we get to our next news story scott did post on uh pcper.com this bit here about nvidia limiting gtx 1080 sli to two cards this is according to an evga support post on their own forums and then while those bridges so work hopefully for- hopefully scott you have screenshotted that <laughs> on the forums in so, case they take it down so at the end there, what Scott was talking about, like, does that mean, like, for a DX11 game on a pair of 1080s and SLI with this bridge, like, would that not work, maybe? Wait, say again. What? Would a DX11 game, because it's using the other kind of communication method. It's using SLI. It's the same communication yeah. method. Well, no, you, you won't need the oh. DX12. The driver's uh, handling it, not the GPU. API. Crap. Well. So. Yeah. Okay. Alan, uh, D- DX11 uses Crossfire, and uh, DX12 uses SLI. Oh, right. Oh. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that that's the difference. Okay. The, the the DX12 multi GPU stuff is very complicated, but there are still there is still a way for a DX12 game to use implicit SLI, yeah. implicit multi GPU, yeah. which is where the driver handles it. No, I was just talking like but, if this new method maybe was exclusive for DX12 stuff or something, and like DX12. It's not. No, work. it's not. Okay, it's not. No, sir. Um, so for all of you that bought. Your Radeon Pro Duos. Okay. I have got good news. I can help you spend more money on your GPU solution. Oh, you mean you can fit even more in your system? Sebastian, tell me about the next investment for the Radeon Pro Duo user. Well, one of the annoying things about the Pro Duo is that it takes up way too much space in your case. You've got two GPUs, but it's taking up two expansion slots. Oh, so the worst. I know. I know. So if you wanted to put four of these... In your system, you have to get one of those extended ATX boards, and there's a few of them out there, of course, that'll run four GPUs easily. Huge case. What if I told you there was a way mm-hmm. to run a dual GPU card with only one slot? Mm-hmm. So what EKWB if? has a full coverage water block. No surprise. They usually come out with one for every high-end GPU. But this one looks really cool. It comes in a couple different finishes. Um, they nicely have filled theirs with red coolant for these pictures. It's actually just like a clear. Oh, that's not the actual color of the. No, oh, I thought it was okay. too at first. And yeah. I looked and like, oh, there's bubbles in there. And the uh, product page shows just like a clear card cover. Liars. But, yeah. It comes with a single slot uh, bracket so that you can create a single slot version of this and run many, many of them in your system. Many, many. Yeah, you can do like seven gamers, one CPU. So, <laughs> except it'll be you know except each card will have two GPUs on it. Think about this: it's fourteen two, GPUs it's, in there. Yeah, it's really two nanos, but now you can run two nanos with a single slot, yeah, whereas the 14, nano still requires two. The nano is a hog; it's a space hog. Uh, guys, I don't want to do you, any of these things you're saying. You can get okay. a water box with a nano. EK sells one, but do they sell a single slot adapter for it? Uh, I think uh, yeah. it uses the same backplane. Oh, okay, yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, then. I, I was know. trying. What kills me though is <laughs> what kills me though is you. You would, it. you would probably just have a single Radeon Pro Duo in a given machine, and you really don't need the slot right next to it that badly because on most motherboards that slot is like a buy one if you even have a slot there. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, but there are buy one video cards now. So uh, Alan, yeah, you could yeah. put a video card in your buy one. That's true. To use it's as important your to use the term process. video card, not graphics card. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you're pretty much just getting some extra video out at that point. Does Windows 10 support concurrent uh, competing GPUs? Can I have NVIDIA and yeah. AMD together? Yeah, you can, yeah. You can do that on Windows 7. Yeah, yeah that works. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's worked for a while. I mean, don't. Yeah, not I recommended. But you but... could. Actually, I know quite a few developers that do that. They, they'll put an AMD card and NVIDIA card, change like when they're doing their development and their trouble in their, you know, yeah, their they swap their display checks, to the other card. Right? They, they, well, they just. Yeah. Swap, which is the primary, and they probably have so two that, monitors. Okay. So that uh, GTX yeah. 710, the buy one card we talked about a couple weeks ago, yeah, 
Yeah. You could use one of those in every buy one or buy four slot and then have one of these pro duos in every buy 16 slot. Sweet. Or you just chop off the back of the buy one slot and shove a pro duo in there. Yeah. <clears throat> you could do that. Hmm. Electrically it sound. It would work perfectly. <coughs> yeah, that might need a buy four at least or something. Yeah, mm. I don't know about that. Um, our final news piece for this evening is Asus announcing an ROG Strix X99 gaming motherboard. Uh, X, new X99 boards, I think you'll see uh, in the next few weeks, several of these being announced uh, refreshes in time. Yeah, every, with, every vendor will have one. So this yes. is an X99 again? It's X99 yes. again. But what's the V3? Uh, it is new. Is it architected LGA differently or something? No, it's, it's V3. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the socket's a little different. No. It's the, well, exact the socket same. was different it's the same. on the just got a to begin with. Number after the V. It's oh. it's the same. So these are motherboards built out for Broadwell E. Okay. So basically, yeah, the, the firmware already supports it, but you can get uh BIOS updates to but if allow I, just about any X ninety nine to support. Look, but isn't there already X a Strix X ninety nine motherboard mm-hmm. out right now? No, it's not a Strix no, motherboard. This is, this is the first Strix motherboard oh, period. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yep. So if you have X ninety nine already in theory, you should be able to get a BIOS update, firmware update that will support Bravo E. Okay. Yeah. In they don't, don't, they don't do the LEDs. double chipset thing on the same socket with the enthusiasts. The, the but they're basically, okay. all the vendors are going to offer up new boards in, in hopes that the, the people who are buying Bravo E will need will maybe need a motherboard for it. And, and these so new motherboards a, are a little bit more exciting, one. slightly and, different. And, and, and motherboards have changed a lot since X79 launched. That's true. With it's USB 3 and Type C and Thunderbolt yeah. 3. And there's, there's a lot of different I.O. now. Uh, Sebastian, yeah. would you please tell me what the most important feature about this motherboard is? As you can clearly see if you're looking at the website and scroll down. Uh huh. RGB. Lighting. Oh. Look at the PCI Express connectors. Wait. Each each one of those latches for the PCI Express slots uh-huh. has an has a light on it. So they're like what? so they're like tra- <gasps> they're like tr- just transparent clear or something, and they yeah. just yeah. light up the. Yeah. Just huh. because you can think fit a surface it. mount LED doesn't mean you need to put a surface mount I LED. Think yeah. You should put more of them. Although I am confused on this last example where they have yellow up top and then purple down here. That's uh, like I think kinda... it's, it's customizable lighting. I'm though. confused no, as is. to why slot two doesn't have one. Because it won't support graphics. But it doesn't match now. That's This is how you know where to put your three GPUs. But are yeah, they it always blinks. on? It tells you you yeah, put like, next GPU but here Ryan, and it blinks at you. Yeah. Does but it really keep glowing? That's when no, you plug I'm, it in. It could. It could. You but could the GPU that. covers the, the latch. Still, no, still not if you're using a single yeah, slot. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, you and your single <laughs> If you have a single slot, slot uh, Radeon Pro Duo water cooler. Just put nano in there. And then I would have the blinking red indicator to say, here's where to put your next Pro Duo card. Yeah, yeah. I think this is cool. You guys are making fun of it, but I, I, also say, I want one of these to put in a certain desk PC build that I am working Ooh, on right now. Yeah, that's true. Think yeah. about how cool this would look underneath tempered glass. I would. Yeah. I need to see how bright these lights are going to be here. You can see what it looks Hopefully like. Hopefully extra not bright. You should be able to adjust the brightness, I would imagine. Sure. I'm talking about the maximum brightness. What is oh. the maximum brightness out of it? Like, I want to know how bright can it get. Sure. Because you want to be, it needs you like, light the room. It needs to be like bright, bright and stuff. You want to you want to light switch rave. It <laughs> also it also has the header for RGB strips that they've been doing. On a oh, does it? Boards. Okay. Yeah. So you can have yep. the whole thing. It's got M.2 on it. I see. Will it blink in? Along with like songs on my music match jukebox. You can probably mm-hmm. script that. No, Looks that wasn't like, Asus. That was someone else. Looks like the top PCIe slot has uh, no, some that extra strengthening reinforcement. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Just, it does. But just it has the one. reinforced PCI slot. Two dot two by two dual band uh, MU MIMO. Wi-Fi. Crazy storage support too. It's got SAT Express M2 and U2 and Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt three. Thunderbolt three. Thunderbolt three. Thunderbolt three. Yeah. Yep. It has their Supreme FX audio, so it has their highest end audio. It's got U.2 for that one SSD. Yeah, that's what well, that U.2. Intel one, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. That really fast Intel drive. <sighs> so you, so and, st- and primo CMOS battery place because, that I want you to because you because now with the 1080 <laughs> except you, if you have SLI because that's where the second because now with the 1080 coming out that you can only do two way SLI with you really really need those extra PCIe slots for other things so you need to use U.2 for your storage that does make an interesting proposition for like what broad LE. <laughs> And like, uh, well, why you need all those lanes? So assuming they do the twenty-eight lane versus forty lane thing again, yeah, I didn't nod. You pretty much never need the forty <laughs> lane ever again. <laughs> I wasn't asking; I was assuming. Oh, okay, gotcha. I tend to do that. You're yep. pretty, you're pretty, why would you? 
Yeah, yeah. 28 lanes, yeah. probably enough. Interesting. For... Well, so 16 by 16 is still 32, oh, but if you're doing 8-8, eight, eight, yeah, I mean, 16, just do, you could do 8-8 eight, eight in an SSD. And that would still leave 12 lanes for other stuff. For three-way yeah. and yeah. that two raid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that would be off the chipset. That's DMI. Well, not not on this chipset it wouldn't be. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but on that one, it wouldn't be bootable. So if you wouldn't bother doing you it. You can't anymore. boot uh, X99. Triple M2 on X99? N- no. Raid. No. I've got to I've gotta read our Patreon updates here. Oh, uh, we've good got lord. Some uh oh. <clears throat> an official, this is, quote, an official comment on Jensen and Tom just edited their pledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's right. I thought you weren't going to do that. I promised to give WizPig64 GTX 1080 just edited their pledge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you. Went up from 5 to 555. Yeah, but you can't have that an one. An official Sorry, comment on Jensen and Tom edited from 50 to $51, by the way. Oh, okay. So that's that's good. Uh, get Josh on the phone to say 399 right now is a new pledge for 399 <laughs> 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 So I, I, I appreciate that. For $399, we will do just that. I would have. I, yeah, I would have interrupted whatever dinner he was eating. Whatever. He's, it's 917. He shouldn't still be eating dinner. Josh, say three nine nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. He doesn't own a cell phone though, so yeah. Ugh. <laughs> that's does. not true. But he had some old LG phone or something. No, Come on, he's Josh. got. He's got. No. I think he carries two smartphones with him. Now. I think he's, he's got like people. a G three and an S six. When did he what turn into one of those? Trophy work trophy. Phone. Somebody gave him. A, they gave him a work phone. Oh. All right. Let's get into our hardware software picks of the week, everybody. I think I have the most exciting one, and I've been really so exciting. Really, I think this is the most useful of all the for those days when we run out of beers. Survived. What's that? Did the pants survive of the accident that you needed to buy these? <laughs> oh, no, you don't use these for that. No. That would be awful. Real men do. <laughs> <laughs> While so, they're wearing the pants. So these are uh, isopropyl alcohol rubbing wipes. Yes. Or I guess you don't need to have hey, I think wipes. he's calling to say oh, hang on, guys. <laughs> hang on, everybody. Hold on, hold on. Yes, Josh? Hey, Ryan. Hey, what's up? Uh, hold on. Okay, now okay. you're now you're on speaker. Go ahead. Three ninety nine. <laughs> Alan, thank you, Josh. You're gonna have to edit that and put that as the cold open. Remember this. <laughs> okay. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> so there you go, guys. This is this is how we produce for this show. Yeah, we produce for the show. Uh, so isopropyl rubbing uh, alcohol. Right? <laughs> was he listening to the? Yeah, he was listening. I could hear us in the background. Oh, so he heard. Uh, caller, turn down your radio. Up. Caller, please turn down your radio. In the background. Uh, they actually list this as a uh, for rubbing and massaging. <laughs> what? So I, no, I want to. This is an interesting question. Josh is going to call back and keep I, yeah, talking I, like this. So isopropyl rubbing alcohol. In the bottle, yeah, it's mm-hmm. rubbing. It's rubbing alcohol. It's not, and it's, it's alcohol for, for rubbing. No, like people used it, like you uh, for sore muscles. You put rubbing alcohol and rubbed it on muscles. This is right, really, Jeremy? Right? Yeah. I like. I think I it's something you didn't want to blow the eight, whatever it costs for rub a five three five, which is mostly this. You used isopropyl alcohol or rubbing I, alcohol. I always, I always thought was it was for meant to like rub things no, off like, of things. I, yeah, it was. It was. Ask a nurse. I think it does get rid that. of bed sores. Guess what? I think it was before my time. It was before my that time. That it was too. a a like a thing that happened. But, okay. But I mean, it clearly says rubbing and massaging, and like you could, I can say it's like rubbing. It's like rub to clean, but massaging you don't. Do I that. don't know if you would want to scrub somebody down with one of those wipes though, because it would kind of start. That's abrasive. The wipe? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty soft. Okay. I mean, they're right. Sure. So we keep these here at the office to clean up uh, thermal paste or anytime we basically have any kind of spill of Accident. stuff if we, or any so, other yeah. kind of rubbing needs uh, <laughs> right yeah. or massaging needs uh these are around and like they're relatively cheap uh what is this six you get 240 of them for 21 bucks can you subscribe and save um i'm gonna go with no no you can also can get, you the get the get wipes, the alcohol-free moist towelettes but uh like if you deal with computers a lot if you ever like i use them to clean off uh, like fingerprints off Prisons? some surfaces and stuff before yep. we do that, you know, you know. But why you only? Be, why only seventy percent before before installing a screen protector on something? I think once you go over seventy percent, it has to be regulated or something like that. Really? You no. Know? I buy like ninety, ninety-two percent. Oh, you can just buy that. You can buy ninety-one percent. I mean, or you can just leave it open on your desk and everyone's gonna go <laughs> smell. <laughs> That's true. You can huff it if you want. Is that why all our markers are dried out? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there alcohol in markers? Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I also the, have a gallon of gasoline I keep under my I desk. Like the, I like the grape <laughs> ones. I like the grape ones. Uh, all right. Who's next? Jeremy. Oh, me. Yep. So almost a year ago, uh, the Canadian government went to the three providers we have up here, which is, used a whole bunch of tax dollars to lay a bunch of fiber and then just sort of let it sit there. That they had to get off their asses and start selling this stuff to anyone who actually wanted it at wholesale prices to be competitive. And they it, were ignored. They were, they were utterly and completely ignored until about two months later when all of a sudden the government said, you know, we're, we're, we're actually going to start suing you for this. Oh. So Bell immediately said, oh, well, we're just going to claim that it's unconstitutional and it will, uh, it, it will get rid of in innovation because there might be competition. And oh, so no. finally today, Canadians may actually freaking be able to get fiber for less than a couple of grand a month because these arseholes have been holding on to it. It's sitting there. It's already laid. There's no investment needed. It's not going to wear out because the light's going through it. We're actually going to maybe see some competition up here with uh, providers coming in and being able to buy it at wholesale prices from the three major providers. Yeah. And then turn around and sell it to us at less than the three arseholes that run the damn country and choose whatever the hell price they want to. It's not going to be brilliant, but it should be faster and a little bit cheaper. And I hope you guys get that sometime too. Oh, thanks. Especially Josh. Especially yeah. Sebastian, who is using LTE right now. Correct. <laughs> it's worked out pretty yeah, well. Yeah, it's holding though. up remarkably, though. Yeah. It, it's better than usual. Would you like me to click? Stop. What would you like me to click? I'm almost there. Okay. All right. Uh, Alan, what was your pick? <laughs> so uh, this used to be an iTunes podcast, video podcast on iTunes. Okay. Like 10 years ago or something. Okay. Right. It, did uh, it start as a YouTube podcast? No, because it, they they didn't upload those videos to YouTube until like so what did three it start years as? later. A podcast? It was a video podcast on iTunes. Okay. I was going to make sure because you cannot start a podcast on YouTube. I'm just putting that out there. That's that's my point. Like it started there. You can continue one. And then you can't start So this one. thing this thing is called Play Value. It was like there was some net pod like podcasting network that, you know, would try to have they had like a few different channels or whatever, right? right? right. Before it was YouTube channels. Yeah. Right. Um and these were actually pretty cool. So they have like a bunch of different episodes and they're talking about it's all like retro gaming stuff. It's like uh, how Nintendo started, how different fights for like how Miss Pac-Man was actually daughter cards made by a couple of MIT grads to modify Pac-Man machines. Sure. You know, that kind of thing, right? And, like, all, all the backstory and everything. And it's done pretty well, and they have, like, you know, people that are, um, you know, it's just produced well. They have, it's kind of like an interview-style format or, yeah. like, you know, people just, like, talking about the stuff, right? Um, and uh, it's stuff that isn't going to change, so it's not like it's outdated, really. It's They're talking about history in the first place, right? So it's, I don't know, it's like... So the fact this video I'm looking at uploaded April 4th, 2011 doesn't really affect... Right, so that company that did, did all that stuff went under, and they actually removed mm. their iTunes, like, you couldn't download them off of the iTunes thing anymore. Right. I think they're still, I think they still listed, if you looked them up on iTunes, but you just can't download downloads, the episodes. Downloads the, cost money. The server's gone, right? Um, but as, as they were going under... I think they just pushed all those videos up to YouTube because they're actually higher resolution on the YouTube channel than they were in the iTunes downloads. Mm -hmm. So good on them for making them still available yeah. after the fact. Right? So what, where do we find this at, by the way? Uh, it, well, I linked it in the show notes, but it's, it's, if you just look up Play Value, uh, all one word, on YouTube, it's just it has its own channel just called Play Value. Um, uh, how about it's... Uh, is it not a simple URL? Yeah, I don't think it's a simple I URL. I thought it was. I just thought I just YouTube. saw YouTube.com slash user slash play value. Okay. So, so it, it is that, that it is that simple. Um but yeah, they're they're worth uh they're worth seeing, and I think because of the way that they kind of went under and then put the stuff on YouTube and they just put it all up as a batch. So like they, sure. they didn't get really subscribers or you know what I mean? It yeah. didn't go out the normal way. Right. So now it just kind of got like an archive just got dumped onto YouTube, so then you know, it didn't necessarily get popular. Here, here, pay for this hosting. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, it didn't necessarily, necessarily get popular or, or followed by anybody. <laughs> um, 
but the content is still very good and it's still definitely worth uh, going through those. All right. Yeah. Cool. And uh, Sebastian, what do you got for us, buddy? Well, I was going to say go to Woot because they had a brand new 32 gigabyte uh, Nexus 5 for $149 today, but it's sold out. But I am using my Nexus 5 right now mm. to connect to you guys because Charter sucks. <laughs> and I had to tether to my T-Mobile LTE to make this phone call happen. So my pick of the week is how easy it is to tether using a Nexus if you're on stack, stock Android. I think your yep. image quality looks and, better. And your video still looks better than Josh's. Yep. Well, with LTE, the sad thing is I get 40 megabit down and about 20 up. And with Charter, I'm limited to, I think, 3 megabits up. Awesome. So video is always going to look better. I'm just going to start tethering. What's your data cap? You no. Know, yeah. <laughs> it's like I have like 8 gigs of like, you, you know, should, that you pool, should. the bonus data pool, plus like 6 gigs per line, I think. So. Oh, okay. You should check your usage you after this call. You should check it, though. Yeah. I've been getting usage Quick, warnings let's... this entire call. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to switch uh, you to the 1440p. Sorry. Uh, yep. I like my 4K upload. Yeah. <laughs> the new Skype 4K. It is important that we point out that GTX 1080 can render at resolutions higher than 1080p. Yes. And mm-hmm. the 1070. More than mm, no, that's the that's the um, GTX twenty one sixty. Yes, twenty one sixty coming out. That's next gen GTX twenty one sixty. Well, if that's what they ah. called the nine ATI or the ten ATI, it was the twenty one sixty. Twenty one sixty. They really backed themselves into a corner there. Yeah, they kind we of. We guarantee will be the AMD four thousand. Too long for GTX ten eighty four K. I mean, we saw it coming. <laughs> it's not like it's not like they just pulled this number out of the thin air. It's like it was yeah, nine eighty. It was if there was a progression. Yeah, there, I, so. I honestly thought they weren't going to do the yeah. thousand series. Well, I know. was wrong. All right, that's the end of our show. Do I look? By the way, no, do I look tanned? Anybody? Do I? No. Do I look like you look, very, you look pale? You didn't even get red. Wait, that's, wait, hold on a minute. I got something for this. Hold Maybe on. you were red then. <sighs> oh God, you're so tan. Yeah, do I look tan now, <laughs> yeah, or do I look yes. less tan no. because we made it tanner behind me? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. PCPro.com slash podcast is the URL. You can find all the previous episodes. Uh, if you want to listen to almost all of the 399 that are uh, recorded up to now, you can do that pretty close if you should so desire to do so. you got a long drive. Yeah. Or something. Approximately 399 hours. Of driving, way more than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're usually about it's, an hour and a half, if yeah, not a little more. This, like this was a little bit lower, but whatever. I, I'd call the mean an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, PCPro.com slash live obviously is where we do our live events. We record our show live, uh, and if you need to uh, subscribe to our mailing list so you are reminded of our events, you can go to PCPro.com slash subscribe for that. Uh, with that, make sure you tune in. Uh, actually, make sure you subscribe because next week we'll remind you about our podcast, our live streams, and we're going to talk about the GTX 1080 and 107. No, just the 1080. Just 1080. Uh, benchmarks, power, review, things that you should see in a technical analysis of a, of a graphics card. So, yeah. uh, ability. We're, we're trying yeah, for exactly. we're trying for VR benchmarks in a in a way. Right. Okay. I guess we're going to do that in, in a way. Uh, so uh, make sure you tune back. We'll see you guys next week. I'm Ryan Stroud. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Alan Malmontano. Reporting on location for joshjack.com, I'm Sebastian Peak. What location? The remote location. I don't think you should ever report from a location that Josh Tech wants you to be.